From the US, the UK, and Hong Kong, South African interior designer Karen Stain's career journey has seen her work on impressive projects. What those grand canvases excited in her was a desire to make it far more achievable to create the same look and feel in anyone's home. I spent 15 years living and working abroad where I worked in interior design, mostly on high-end projects. In all of that time, what I realized is that interior design was only accessible to high-end projects or really wealthy individuals. When I came back to South Africa and Cape Town, I decided to start the home studio with the goal of making interior design affordable and approachable to everyone. South Africans are really design savvy, but not all of us have loads of disposable income available to spend on interior design. So the premise of the home studio is that we can break our services down into much smaller bite-size offerings so that people can afford us on smaller projects, even if it's just a living room, and we'll put the concept and plan together for you, and then we hand it over to our client and they can roll it out as and when their budget allows. So they don't have to roll it all out now, it can take them six months, it can even take them a year, but at least they've got the plan and they know what they're working towards. It is the ideal approach if, like most of us, you're needing to save towards investing in your home. In any levelling up process, you've got to think of the forward planning. So Capitec is offering their clients the same approach by offering them not only financial planning solutions, but different savings accounts or ways to save for those levelling up. All our clients need to have a budget in place before they start a project. They need to have a goal, which is their design vision, and they need to have savings for those unexpected occurrences on any project. It's usually not a case of if, it's a case of when it's gonna happen. So that really aligns with Capitec's financial solutions. Using the power of paint offers a huge return on investment, and it need not mean a bold color choice. This is the main bedroom. I purposely selected the color of this wall to create a very cocoon and cozy bedroom setting. We wanted a darker space, so we've only got a small window in the room, but this mirror has been selected just to help balance the light around when we need it. We've gone for a very, very minimalistic approach. We've just got the bed, the two bedside tables, and a couple of soft furnishings like the mirror, the artwork, and the light on the wall. For the main bathroom, Karen has gone minimal, monochrome, and masculine to balance out the pink preferred by the three girls in the house. This is Sophie's bedroom, and this space actually used to be the main living room in the home. We went with a mostly green backdrop because she's quite a nature lover, but I didn't want anything based on florals or botanicals that she might outgrow. So we went with this kind of neutral style that she'll be able to grow with. But she is also a huge fan of pink, as most little girls are. Hence, we brought the pink touches in the headboard, the bean bags, and my favorite feature, the bedroom doors. Because this room is very, very large, we have actually incorporated this as a playroom for the kids as well. So we have the arts and crafts station over there where they spend a lot of time drawing and playing. In Ashley's room, the design of the bed defines the space, but there was a lesson to be learned from this. Because it's a small bedroom, I went opposite to what most people would do. I brought in darkness. I painted the walls this beautiful sort of deep blue color and then complemented with this really intense floral wallpaper. Because Ashley is still quite little, she's got a small bed to the ground and just to bring in a little bit of interest, we got this teepee bed. This room is where I can give you an example of poor planning because I bought the bed before I designed the room. So as you can see, it hangs over the windows. In an ideal world, I would never have bought this bed had I known that it was gonna interfere with the views. The other elements that I love in this room is the little playhouse for the kids, the great storage for the books, 
and the large bank of cupboards to house all of their toys and to keep it as minimal as we possibly can given the room. The family bathroom is minimal and white with a feminine feature wall in pink. Then there's Karen's mastery of dark shades and light. This is what we are calling our pajama lounge. It used to be the dining room and living room of the former house, which joined with the kitchen over there. We've created it into one large living space so that we can take in the views of City Bowl and Signal Hill and Lion's Head. Because this room receives so much natural light, I actually went for this really dark color, which I love. I love this sort of darker spaces because it helps absorb all the abundance of light coming into the room. In contrast to that, I brought in this, what I would call the piece de resistance of the room, the herringbone wood floor. We have got this contrasting with the stone of the fireplace and then the beautiful texture of the upholstered sofas. To keep it very clean, to keep it very minimal, we've hung a few pieces of art on the wall and one or two rugs to really ground the space and the furniture. The biggest part of the project was having the vision to go double storey, not by building up, but by turning the downstairs garage and open spaces into this showpiece. For the lower level, we took a bit of a yin and yang approach, making this a much lighter and whiter space than upstairs. This is our combined living, dining, kitchen, playroom space. Ultimately, what I wanted was that indoor-outdoor living. So we created this larger space, but what I was really after was something very minimal and very clean, no clutter. The sofa was designed to create that minimalistic feel. We use this very woven tactile fabric on the upholstery and this rug especially on the floor is really soft and cushy underfoot. The dining table and chairs are specifically done in wood and leather just to break up that all white setting and just bring a little bit of warmth into the room. From the living area, we go into the kitchen and to break up the all white setting, we brought in this gray green color just to add a little bit of dimension to the space, especially since it's at the back of the room, there's not a lot of natural light in here. We knew that it could take a little bit more depth. As part of the finishes that we select for the space, I went with this off-white quartz countertop as opposed to a stone or a marble. These guys are really family friendly, they don't damage, they don't break. I can spill my red wine here, no problem, it's not going to stain the countertops. On this side, instead of opting for a built-in hob, I went for these built-in cookers which give the surface a really sort of clean, seamless finish and when everything is off the counter, there's no clutter. An approach which helps especially with kids. This is our kids' playroom. It looks very neat and tidy. That's because I created this custom joinery to hide all of the toys, all of the mess, it all sits here in these drawers. So that at the end of the day, once it's all happened here on the floor, they can just pack it away. We don't have to see it. Then Karen made a point that she too is quite human. Stepping out from the playroom into the garden, Inside, it looks like we've got it all under control and the house is finished, but the reality is we're still working on it. Two years later and it's still a work in progress. Renovations take a lot of time and planning, so you can't just level up overnight. Mostly I enjoy the end result with the clients, that keeps me motivated. I love seeing how much they enjoy, how their space turns out, especially if they didn't know where they were going to start or how they were going to get there. I really hope that the home studio can grow enough to take the approachable, affordable interior design to as many people across the country as possible. Don't be afraid to play with the power of paint and light in dressing and defining a room. Tidy away what's there before adding anything new. Tell us your achievable home makeover plan to use these tips to greatest effect and stand a chance of winning a thousand rand.
Simply reply to the competition post on the Insider SA social media platforms using hashtag Capitech Live Better. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Get more of the Insider SA online. Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider SA. Watch the show Monday evenings at 6, repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.